here with our other nodes, but a little bit off to the side because we're not going to be focusing on this 3D uh, node system here for just a moment. We're going to just look at the green screen footage so you can connect your viewer up to that. And if we play it back, you can see that We've got just this really nice little clip with our actor kind of walking across the green screen, looking around. Really, really f is going to fit in nicely with this background that we have been working on so hard. So what we need to do is go ahead and pull a key on this green screen. Now, initially, this may look like a really difficult green screen to key because there's so much else going on, but it's actually not going to be that tough. So I'm going to hit stop on the playback there. And we'll just come over here to the left where our nodes are located and take a look at the keyer nodes. So we've got about seven different nodes here to choose from. And most of the keying that you'll be doing probably will be done with Primat, Keylight, and maybe Ultimat. I really gravitate towards Keylight personally, um, and you'll see that a lot in some of the green screen courses that we have here. Um, but also, uh, the Primat node I really like as well. And in this course and in this case, Primat actually is going to work the fastest and the best. So that's the one that we're going to stick with. And we'll talk a little bit about why as we work through that. So go ahead and drop in a Primat node. And you can see that because I had the read node selected, it automatically connected the foreground pipe, that's what FG stands for, to my green screen footage. Now, if I want to connect the background, I can do that. But it's not going to look great right away, um, but I'll still go ahead and just plug it into the scanline render node. It needs to be plugged into a 2D node like that, so if I have it plugged into the scanline render, it's going to be plugged into the output of everything that we um, are seeing when we view that scanline render. Okay, so what we need to do now is take a look at the initialize section. We've got our algorithm and our auto compute. And auto compute's pretty amazing that we don't even have to sample the green screen to calculate this. So let's just go ahead and take a stab at it and see what we get. So I'll go ahead and click auto compute. And you can see that even though he's not really in the right place or the right size, we've got our guy kind of right here in the middle. However, his pants are getting kind of a weird purplish tint to them, as well as some of the other dark things in the shot, which we don't really care about those, but they're a good indicator that something strange is going on with the color calculation. So what I'll do is instead of using the Primat, uh, just regular Primat algorithm, let's try Primat RT. And this actually gives me a pretty good result. I do have a little bit of a halo around my actor, and there's courses we have on how to use multiple keyer nodes to be able to totally totally get rid of this, but in my case, because I'm going to make him so small to fit on this little path, we really don't need to go into all of that because that's not even going to be visible anymore. So rather than take up a lot of your time showing you all the ins and outs of green screen, um, we're just going to be using the Primat node very simply just as an introduction to show you how easy it is to pull a key with this node. Um, and then if you're really interested in some of the green screen stuff, uh, then you can watch that on our site um, for, you know, a, a lot of courses we've got on different ways you can use green screen and in your footage and how to pull those. But we still do need a little bit more work, as you can see. Um, if we go ahead and start trying to put this into our 3D scene just as it is, we're going to get all of this stuff over here on the sides. So let's go ahead and kind of pretend like we're ready to do that and see how it looks, and then we'll be able to see the changes we need to make. So what we'll do is go ahead and just plug that Primat node in into the scene. So we need a card to be able to do that. So I'll hit the tab key. And basically we're, what we're going to be doing is just projecting our green screen keyed footage onto a card, which will then go into our scene and just be kind of integrated in there with everything else. Now I'm going to unhook that background pipe from uh, the Primat node because I don't want that anymore. And now I'm just going to be plugging my card right into the scene. Now let's take a look with our viewer at the scanline render. 
and let's actually go into our 3D view and see what's happening in here. Okay, so you can see we've got some really nice transparency around the actor, but we've still got this weird uh, stuff kind of from the background here. So we just need to create a mask, um, a traveling mat rather, that's going to follow along with our actor, and that'll help to get rid of any noise we might have on the green screen um, by having it follow along with him, as well as getting rid of everything on the outside. So let's go ahead and come over here that's going to go in between the primat node and the card so we'll go ahead and just go back to our 2d view and I'm just going to view the primat node because that's going to be a little bit easier um, and we'll drop in a roto after the primat so select your primat to make sure that that roto gets added after primat in the tree and we'll hit the tab key and type in roto and that's going to go in right there and it'll automatically move our viewer down for us as well. So let's start on frame zero and you can see if I get in really close here his foot is just on the edge about to get cut off so we want to make sure that we kind of start down here and don't miss out on any of that so I'm just going to kind of pull that down just like that and then sort of come up through here around his elbow and then just really quickly kind of pull this through here like this. And you can see this is just extremely rough and that's okay, that's what we need. So I'm gonna just scrub forward. He's about to kind of start moving out about here. So I'll set another key just by coming over here and choosing set key on the current frame. And you can see when I pull this forward, he's gonna start moving out right about here. So I'll go ahead and, and grab these three little points and we'll pull those forward to give him some more room. So it's going to kind of work like that as he starts to move over. And we need a little bit more kind of right about there. So we'll go ahead and pull those over, give him some more room again. And at this point we could probably start to pull this back a bit. And going forward a little bit more you can see his foot kind of has going out of frame. So we'll just again kind of pull those over here and then I'm going to go ahead and select all of these and just sort of reposition him inside of that roto shape. Okay, so let's take a look now. I'm just going to scrub through. We want to make sure he never goes outside of the rotoscope because we don't want to get so close to him that we cut anything off. He gets close there but he doesn't go outside of it so uh, maybe we want to just pull this forward a little bit more just in case we don't want to mess anything up by having too tight of a mask and that looks great perfect okay so let's go ahead and jump back over to our scan line render node just plugging that in there and see what we get okay so um, we're still seeing this over here on the side and if we look at the output of this roto let's go ahead and do that again and look at our alpha channel okay so what we're seeing right now is basically everything outside of that area and that's really not what we're wanting so I'm gonna go into my color and we're going to turn that all the way down, just like that. So now um, that's going to become transparent. But that's kind of the opposite of what we want. We want basically everything outside of him to be cut away, not him uh, himself. So what we can do is just come over to this little button right here and invert. So we'll invert that. And now we have a perfect alpha channel of our little guy. So I'm going to switch this back over to input. So we just have that all going all the way to the edges there. If that ever happens to you, you can just change that to input then, and that'll fix that. And you can see now that's working really nicely. We, I'm not noticing any kind of noise, um, maybe a little bit right there. So let's come back in on this frame and we'll kind of rotate this in and pull that over in there just to get rid of that noise and we'll make sure that that doesn't cover him up perfect okay great so we're getting a really nice key pulled there now let's take a look back again over at our scan line render and let's look in our 3d so it looks 
kind of okay, but like this weird ghosted thing is happening. So remember, we need after these uh, roto nodes a premolt node. So very quickly and easily, we can just kind of move that up, select our roto, hit tab, and type in premolt. And that will add a premolt node in. And now we have a perfect key around our little guy. So let's come back in the next lesson and we'll start integrating.